All right, guys, uh, thank you for joining us on this uh, Thursday afternoon here for a special uh, segment with uh, the man who might need no introduction, uh, Ghost. Um, but for those of you who don't know Ghost, he is a very talented artist. Um, you are based in uh, Germany, I believe. Yeah, in Berlin, Germany. Berlin. And, uh, you know, we connected with Ghost way back on the BitClout days, which at this point seems like it was years ago. But just a, a mere nine months ago, he popped up um, and he started with uh, he just started dropping some absolute fire art on uh, on BitClout and has progressed since then to uh, Ethereum and uh, launched some NFT series on both. BitClout and Ethereum. So we're going to bring him up here today and uh, talk a little bit about his his kind of journey towards the blockchain art and how he got into it. But I am so excited to actually finally connect with you. Um, we've been kind of running in the same circles for quite some time now, but have never actually really spoken to each other. And uh, man, it is just such a pleasure to have you on here. Man, thanks. Thanks for that beautiful introduction <laughs> <laughs> no no problem the pleasure is all mine and and uh, i know alpha mint is super excited to to hear you talk too it's uh fucking crazy when you said like we we go way back and i also thought instantly in my mind yeah we do and then i realized just as you said it's only fucking nine months ago uh excuse my swearing no uh, fucking swear all you want man let's go <laughs> i'm good uh, with it no seriously it's uh, it feels like it's been a like like years but still uh it's it's so so little time that uh um, band in the in the space not only on bitcloud but also in the in the nft space mm, i know uh, i've been following nfts uh for quite a while um also before it, it went mainstream but i never had the feeling that it's still like that it's ready for for the mainstream and that it's ready to have like real use cases and um, it was really funny uh, when I when I started uh, with you guys to meet meet everyone and uh, we we had chats and we we had uh, same contacts like uh, the the bits today team and um, those guys and and Vio was there who's also running uh, Alpha Mint yep yep alongside uh, a few people and uh, I mean it, it was such a nice for me, such a nice space. It reminded me really of my youth and how we used to be in the internet and connect and write with people all over, uh, across the globe and uh, be friends. And uh, it felt so original and so so beautiful and really re reviving and inspiring. And I think that that was kind of like my thing here in Berlin. It's all like competition and everyone is doing something and everyone who things they are creative they come to berlin and they they compete with each other and i'm so not the competitive type of guy and so i kind of found myself being a bit loud in in those nft spaces uh also on clubhouse and uh, on twitter yeah that's it was like such a crazy time because like you know we were just saying like it feels like it was forever ago and i even caught myself like i thought i was thinking like oh yeah back in 2020 like that was like a year and a half ago like no no that was earlier earlier this year which is is wild but uh i i have no doubt that your nft experience goes um back before um bitcloud too if i'm correct in that correct like you were you you dabbled in uh ethereum and you had purchased nfts and whatnot so how did how did you get into that nft um marketplace before you even started minting them like what was the first thing you bought what was the first thing you were excited about yeah um it's it's interesting though um because i was first into crypto and um, as i said i had the nfts on like on the back of my mind and i, I knew they were there but i was into crypto and i had bought uh, a bitcoin when it was like 11k and ever since i didn't buy a lot i, I didn't have the funds and uh, I, I couldn't afford to buy much but I knew it was the like forever. I knew it was the future, you know, like crypto for me was clearly the thing that will dominate the future uh, in terms of many, many aspects of daily life. And so I had this uh, a little Bitcoin and uh, I turned out to get some few uh, thousand uh, bucks in return. And uh, 
I was looking to invest in some some altcoins uh, just to diversify, and uh, yeah, and then I learned about NFT like that it's coming and it's full speed, and this is when I just realized, wow, that's the concept we've been waiting for. Like we artists, we've been waiting for this forever. We didn't have a name for it or we didn't know how it will look like. But I instantly recognized it and dropped everything I was holding, like any jobs I had, whatever. I just dropped everything and started doing NFTs because I knew that that was like a big thing. And I started out just trying out stuff, uh, some of my old works. I, I had just finished uh, uh, a whole uh, series of paintings, of uh, abstract paintings. Were those like digital paintings or, or like real? No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, like real, real paintings on yep. real canvas. Uh, and I was really proud and I was thinking, uh, yeah, let's, let's exhibit them and organize an exhibition and whatnot. But then I realized, wait, that's too much money that just goes off into nothing just to, to have them displayed in a, in a room and probably nobody will know about it or buy them. So I decided, yeah, let's let's try this NFT thing. And uh, I didn't have too much of a clue uh, how it worked. I just tried out. And to be honest, none of those paintings sold ever. Uh, I took them down eventually because <laughs> uh, they weren't doing nothing. They weren't flying nothing. So then I tried to uh, revive my 3D game uh, and started doing some 3D stuff. Um, which I wasn't quite fluent in, to, uh, to be honest. Uh, I had done it when I was a teenager, and then just like I didn't need it, and it fell away. And just for just um, for some context, ghost, when like what kind of like time time frame are we looking in here? Like, is this 2018, this 2019, earlier this year? No, it's, it's all this year. All this year. Uh, okay, like, cool. Yep. End, end of the year, I was uh, finishing the uh, painting series, and I'm a professional. Uh, illustrator that's that's what I do for a living and uh, it's mostly basically advertising you paint stuff or or draw stuff for pay, uh, for advertising a lot of the times so this is what brings you money um, yeah for you to get paid you're just doing what everybody else wants you to do not what yeah, you want to be exactly. doing right yeah exactly. yeah exactly so this painting stuff was my my free time stuff uh, but yeah to make it short nothing really worked um, until uh, I did those goals that you also see in my profile picture. And uh, this was actually a real sculpture, <laughs> but I made it to look like a three uh, uh, avatar. And uh, it was really funny because people thought it was 3D and then I got hooked and I thought, yeah, why not make 3D stuff? <laughs> so I started and I'm a, I'm a disciplinary artist so i know the basics of a lot of techniques and can do them um, but of course i'm not a master in all of them but i have like creative vision and that's that's what uh, is my biggest uh, thing so when i started this i saw some sales you know pretty pretty low first one was 0.1 uh, eth on foundation okay which is basically nothing i paid on top just to list it mm -hmm. And um, then some guys off of uh, BitCloud started, uh, uh, got some of theirs. Uh, uh, Jonah Bo uh, Bowden uh, bought one, who was also on BitCloud and also, I think, uh, here on Discord. Um, yeah, Jonah was everywhere for a little bit there. Former, uh, former NBA player turned like absolute yeah. like crypto bull. Yeah, and uh, then... Um, came the the uh, basically the Pantone Live series. And the Pantone Live series, just to give you some context, it all started with one picture that I just did for fun. And this this was the very first picture in my uh, stream on Foundation uh, in the very bottom. And it's called Hot Dog Legs. Uh, <laughs> I remember that one too, yeah. My task was to make a painting so simple that you could still recognize what it is, but um, you don't have a lot. And this was like back in, I think back in 2016 or whatever. And it just it just was lying there and uh, 
and nothing happened with it. I, I always thought that was cool. And, you know, like uh, in the beginning of the year, uh, last year I struggled quite a lot. Uh, some uh, um, uh, some mental health issues. Uh, I was uh, started my therapy uh, back then. Best thing in my life. I can only uh, only uh, encourage everyone who's struggling to to go get help because it really helps. And uh, I was, you know, thinking about some routine that I can do uh, every morning uh, just to to lighten my spirit up with my morning coffee and to to get into my creative flow. And I thought of this picture of the hot dog legs and I thought, yeah, well, th that's a nice idea. I will, every morning I will do a pantone. And I started the series out of fun on Bitcloud and it quite it took me by surprise that everybody reacted so positively and everybody was loving it. And I was kind of surprised because I didn't expect it. And then at one point, and uh, this was uh, this was like pre NFT Bitcloud days too, right? Like you were just posting these pictures up and, yeah, and yeah, having yeah, fun exactly. with them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was just just uh, just putting them out there and uh, seeing seeing like for the for the people. I even did some some characters that were present on Bitcloud uh, back then, like the clown and and uh, uh, the duck. Uh, and yeah, so <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Quite too. a few, but nobody cared actually. Like everybody was, yeah, super cool, but nobody really cared. And um, at one point, uh, the the gas prices were so low, like thirty three or thirty five uh, or something. And I decided, why not? I had like twenty uh, uh, Pantone lives. Why not just upload them and see what happens? And so I did. And like the next day, I'm working at home. Uh, I get a, a email notification, you know, like the sound, like bing. Yep. Then another one, and then another one, and another one, six in a row. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? And I checked my mails and I saw a foundation uh, e email, and six times the foundation email that says uh, an auction. And I was kind of like, I thought this was just an error. It just came, the, the one came six times, uh, six times. And then I checked and then I saw that six pieces actually had a bid uh, on there. And I was really surprised and couldn't believe it at first. And then I checked who, who bid on it. Yeah, I was going to say, this is the this is the craziest part of the story. Yeah, and it was uh, Mondo, uh, Mondoar, uh, the guy uh, who has a, a crazy NFT collector, uh, has a... a gallery in Liverpool and is basically known all, all, all over the place uh, ma makes huge purchases and yeah one I of the biggest like, NFT really, collectors out there yeah and I was like really wow like why did he buy it like I'm, I'm not known nothing and then I actually just wrote to him like just DM'd him and was like man thank you for buying them uh, but uh, can you tell me like why <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to my surprise, he just, he was super nice and he just told me, hey man, uh, I saw them and I hadn't seen such a perspective on things and I thought they were really good and I wanted to have them in my collection. And, you know, by that time, uh, he, th that was like, I, I think like more than 10k that I made in an instance and this was so much money for me and I was like really thankful and thought I'd uh, make a homage to and made a Pantone with his skull. Uh, he has uh, this logo of, a, of a, a colorful skull. Yeah, Mondo right there. I've got it pulled up on the screen, which will uh, I'll be able to... I'm recording this for anyone listening, and it'll be on YouTube with uh, some live um, me, me showing along what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, cool. Cool, man. But yeah, keep going, and, the skull. Yeah, and I made the skull, uploaded it. You know, I, I was thinking maybe he will buy it or even if he doesn't buy it, it's just out there and everybody can see that that uh, I'm, I'm thankful for it. And to my surprise, he didn't buy it, but someone else. No, did. there's somebody very notable as well that we've uh, we've talked a lot about in the in the last few days. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I checked him out. The name didn't ring a bell because <laughs> I'm clueless sometimes when it comes to names. 
And I was thinking like, yeah, I'll just Google him uh, and Google the name that was uh, in his profile. And I like, I thought this was a mistake. There must be another guy by that name because that's not possible. And uh, I checked again, checked again, but every time uh, it came the same out, it was Keith Grossman, uh, president of Time Magazine. <laughs> right. And so no I big was, deal. Yeah, I was super stoked that <laughs> it was him. I was really, really crazy proud to, to, because as an illustrator, you know, Time Magazine, it's like one of the biggest pu publications that, that feature uh, illustrations uh, uh, for a very long time. And, you know, I thought I'm going to DM him <laughs> and ask him why he bought it. You're just sliding yeah. into the DMs of everybody. Eh? You're just like hitting yeah. up Mondo, hitting up Keith Grossman. <laughs> like, <laughs> And I, I wasn't expecting much, but, you know, he just bought it. So why not? And uh, I asked him first in the first place. I thought he was uh, uh, wanted to gift it to, to Mondo. And I was like, yeah, why did you buy it? Uh, do you want to gift it to Mondo? And he was like, no, it was so unique, the style and the perspective. And I was like, you guys must have talked. Because he said the same thing. And this was for me the first time in, in history where I got this kind of feedback where everyone says the same independently of each other. And everybody liked it and it was going crazy about it. So this was the first day of Panton Live. Second day, I get, again, two email notifications. Uh, again, Mondo bought another two. So after that, kind of kind of went same way, like Keith Grossman bought another one. And uh, then one of my collectors off of BitCloud, he bought the uh, uh, Mola Misa. <laughs> That's what I call her. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find that one right now, too, because that was one that stood out to me. Yeah, and it was really funny because it was an anonymous account on the foundation, and I just didn't know who it was. And then I was talking to, to uh, Big Mountain on uh, BitCloud. That's, that's one of my investors there. Right. Uh, he's anonymous. I don't know who he is. Um, don't know much about him, but he's like a really super nice guy. And I was talking just randomly with him about other things, and he said you know like oh um i really liked the uh pizza. and i was like oh yeah cool yeah i also like it it just got sold and then it clicked in my head <laughs> like, <"Yeah. laughs> did you buy it <laughs> and yeah it, it was turned out to be him and uh yeah after that uh in, in the last, last part uh the last sales that I had were also quite fantastic. Yeah, so let's let's talk about that. Um, yeah, on a yeah. list of who's who, you continue to add to them and, uh, and 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 make that. And I'm curious if you slid into this person's DMs as well. Um, oh, I did. <laughs> yeah, of course you did. <laughs> but yeah, looking at them, you have a um, you know like a a, a Warhol like um, and the the uh, crypto bomb one that were purchased on uh, Foundation here as well by uh, none other than uh, Vincent Van Doe, which is I mean in, in NFT Twitter and in NFT collectors is about as big as they get as well. Guy is mad. <laughs> I Dude, I, I just got to say, too, like, you're not on camera, but I can hear, like, the smile on your face when you're talking about oh, this, right? Good. Like, yeah. it's 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 giving me, like, tingles. Yeah, it was, it's just so crazy because, and that's what I wrote him. Um, that, that, that I was, like, really thankful because um, I, I come from a household where, like, uh, we came as refugees to Germany and uh, we had to build up everything. Like I remember the day when we left from Bulgaria, uh, my dad had put all the money we had on a, on the table and uh, uh, just while packing. And I saw it and I, I thought to myself, wow, that, that's so much money. But uh, looking back now that I'm grown up, it was just 800 Deutschmarks. And back then, the, like, this is like 500 bucks uh, nowadays. And, uh, right. 
I've never been like exposed to big riches or like a high high end lifestyle. And, uh, uh, never like had to hustle all my life basically. And um, when when I saw that in the NFT space, people like really they changed lives. Um, this is what I told him. I said like, hey, thank you uh, because you just did me some really good and uh i can can continue what i'm doing uh being creative and that's on you and i just thanked him and uh he responded and i also asked him of course why he the fuck he bought us. <laughs> it, it's not it's not obvious at this point dude that these are fucking amazing <laughs> no i, I just wanted to hear it <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's all right, man. You you are allowed to just want to hear it sometimes too. But like, no, honestly, that whole story is, is is incredible. And like, even just you know your backstory leading all up to this, right? Like, and it's one of the incredible things about about crypto and and you know even just the internet, but like crypto in general. Like the internet allowed artists to get a large scale exposure. Um, you know, pre pre internet. Uh, you'd have to have these things up in galleries really hard to get your, your name and your art out there. The internet kind of carried that along. Um, but, but with crypto, you know, Ethereum and NFTs that now that you can actually sell it and, and for what these things are actually worth um, to anybody anywhere in the world that's interested, interested in it uh, is a, is crazy. And then, you know, for you to, to throw these things out there, and just attract some of the the biggest names in the NFT world is just it's mind blowing, man, and uh, like so well deserved too. And I'm not just trying to give you a pat on the back because you're on the show and whatnot, but like you, I mean, your art is speaks for itself, and uh, I know that everybody agrees in in here. In fact, I see in the AM show chat that uh, I think Shubang actually just put a bid on one of your. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. I just wanted to say a big thank you to Shubang groups has been there like from from the beginning man you know, this guy is so mad uh and so so talented in what he what he does uh and re really really thank you brother it's it's a long it's been a long time coming <laughs> but now finally <laughs> the, the cake and it's the best time i i, I tell you so and I also just want to backtrack for my own little uh, my own, you know, self pleasure here was uh, looking at the ghost face collection that you did starting out on BitClout. Um, but you did mint these all on Ethereum and these were profile pictures that you did uh, back when like profile pictures on uh, on, on BitClout were a little bit of a rug and um you know, you put these out. Uh, I believe ASG was the first one you did, but I was uh, shortly thereafter with number 101 on my uh, Clout Cobain picture. So I just like pulled that up. And this is like, this is a, a profile picture that obviously since I've changed my name isn't as applicable. Uh, but man, I like, I cherish that and I look at it all the time and just like, man, that's just, it was so good. Man, thank you from, from the bottom of my heart. It, it was such a fun time. Uh, to to do those and to to celebrate each uh, every time I dropped it. it was like really really funny and interesting and it was a good challenge you know because I mean not not many people like everyone is in low effort I'm basically whatever I did uh, the only low effort project that I did is the ugly faces and that that was the the punchline of it all. Yeah, no, I, I remember the ugly faces. Yeah, too. But. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't hold long, but but that was the only one where I said, "Okay, one left low effort." No, I honestly like. I know you weren't in the like. I know you. I don't think you were in our Discord at the time. I actually, I, I for sure know you weren't, um, because I remember seeing ASG stumble upon that, and then myself, I was like, "Oh man, like I gotta get in on this guy and like the profile pictures." So. Um, I bought and then you shipped me mine and I was like more than happy to pay the 0 0.05 uh, ETH that you, you sold it to me for on, on uh, OpenSea. And uh, yeah, man, everybody just went wild for that stuff. And it looks like you made a, a good 25, 30, no, more than that, 45 of them somewhere in there. I don't remember exactly, but it was over, over here, I think. I'm looking at the classic Dirty Milk one right now. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
so yeah, so from from humble beginnings to uh, to some BitClout fame to some full blown NFT exposure, it's been a pretty pretty wild ride in in terms of that. So uh, like, what's next for you right now? Is there anything that you uh, you have on the horizon? Anything you're thinking about doing? Um, anything you're dabbling in? Um, quite to to be honest, quite a few things are on my on. My, uh to do a list uh I'm, I'm still not sure exactly what i can tell you but um i'm planning quite a, a few bits that are go going to be uh up next uh i have uh one collabo with uh with uh, spookies okay uh, on bit cloud um that's uh, still to be released i don't know when exactly um, I have a project that I'm doing with uh, Sony Germany. They asked me to design a, a redesign a cover. Of, uh, but to people from outside Germany, it doesn't mean a lot. But in Germany, Drei uh, Fragezeichen, that's a children's um, show, basically. And uh, they're pretty awesome and pretty uh, famous in Germany because uh, children listen to them before bed, and it's like a detective show. And they've been in the 70s, I think. And they have these old school covers, and they want and, uh, they want to bring it out as with uh, five other artists. So this is also uh, going to be next. And uh, I have my Pantone drop that's uh, probably coming end of next. I have like to 20 new pieces oh wow um, so you're just dropping to, them all at one time um that was the plan for, uh because uh, i want to make a bit of a fuss uh, uh and promo for that oh sorry Cause... sorry go so you're just cutting out a little bit there i don't know maybe oh, need a little, little bit closer to your mic discord might be cutting off the sound a bit yeah can you hear me again yeah that seems to be a little bit better Okay, I'm sorry. No, no, all good. Um, yeah, and uh, this Pantone drop drop is the next big. Um, waiting to to present because I, I can't wait. I have some beautiful pieces. Uh, I have some commentary on on the NFT. Some really fun stuff uh, back from the childhood. Uh, some some. We draw pieces, uh, some, some fine art pieces, and yeah, it's a, it's a wild mix of, of really, really diverse stuff, but still everything in my Pantone style. And uh, I, I can't wait to show show you guys. Yeah, that's uh, I'm super exciting to to hear that you're continuing the Pantone series and that uh, you're gonna be you're gonna be dropping more of them. It sounds like. Uh, all you do is is just work on art like do you do you do anything else like what does ghost do to relax like what do, what do you uh what do you do outside of art or is this just like a 24 7 thing for you apart from a, a quick hiatus to thailand <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh yeah i mean yeah sure uh, I, I i do things uh, when i'm free but uh, nowadays to be honest mostly I just try to relax and to to be with my girlfriend and uh, spend quality time. And um, I've, I've started to to go uh, into meditation, kind of looking out for me because I had a really unhealthy, you know, work life balance mm -hmm. um, before I had my mental health issues, and it was quite a bit of a a thing for me and i really decided after I changed it up uh, because it really uh showed me that that it's it's not you know like uh it's not that easy to accomplish something when, when health is breaking on the on the line and uh, i mean some some of you may still remember um my ghost vo voice um i had a i had a voice um vocal cord uh how do you say it a vocal cord 
yeah, they, they, they didn't work. Right, like, yeah. I remember you talking on Clubhouse, and uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit uh, surprised when I heard you talking today because uh, you had, like, this really, like, deep, raspy kind of voice, and um, obviously that's not the case now. But I didn't realize that you had had uh, actual health issues going on with it. Yeah, it's, uh, and back then I thought it was because of something happened with the book. Uh, but as it turned out, it was uh, more of a, uh, yeah, more of a head issue. And I didn't think that was possible, to be honest. The therapy, it's a vocal specialist. We worked on it and uh, it just suddenly on my birthday, it came back again. Huh. Started to come back at least, uh, not totally, but it started to re reincarnate <laughs> i don't know came back so now i'm uh very much into like a don't go party hard and i try to to look out for me and for my health and uh just spend quality time and of course uh i i, I do other things i meet people uh, uh um, i do music but I, I was a semi-professional musician uh like in my <laughs> in my early days um, so this is also some, some fun stuff that just, just to, to, uh, spice it up, you know, like it's fun. So yeah, uh, I do a lot of stuff, but, but mostly to be honest, uh, I'm in front of the, uh, computer and smashing out some dope stuff and it never leaves me, you know, like I always have the internal, uh, uh, pressure to, to drop something and to to make something yeah yeah what's the way of my whole life no i was just gonna say like it's it's so easy to just get consumed um by everything you're doing but you know the point that you made about uh you know your own mental health and taking care of yourself and being able to step back and relax it's just incredibly important right because i mean you could even feel it kind of with the the whole you know the sin city riddles that everyone was doing it was just like it was like just so consuming um that people were just glued to their computers and you know you start to go on 24 48 hours 60 hours and, you know it's just sleeping sporadically here and there like um, there's a, you know a lot of money on the line, but you also have to take care of yourself too. And uh, you know you mentioned going to therapy, which is uh, as something that I think is incredibly important as well. And there's you know people in the, in the past saw it as almost like a, a shameful admittance of defeat, but uh, you know it's like it you know it's your mental health and your physical health are important. So uh, I'm, I'm really glad to to hear that you're cognizant of that and you're you're taking care of yourself so that you can put out all of this great art. Yeah. And I, I think, um, like for me, I come background, uh, my parents were, they were, they are not like, uh, so much into this, like, yeah, let's get some help. They were rather old school. They were like, yeah, just, just get over it. Yeah, lift your lift your chin up, toughen up, and yeah. smile, yeah, right? Yeah. Just, everybody has problems, um, and I think that's such a pity in our time that um, uh, our parents uh, mostly uh, confront their issues the right way, and uh, of course they are like not not the best people right now to to start uh, teaching you. So we have to teach ourselves and. Uh, we have to to see that this is a big, big strength strength to um, actually uh, get into these issues. Because I swear to God, and I'm not a religion to the universe, um, this shit is really fundamental. You know, like uh, just be with yourself and try to understand yourself. Try where you're coming from. You're gonna be a better person. And uh, it made me sensible to so many things that I was just kind of accepting for them to be the way they are. Right. And uh, yeah, last year was just fucking awesome. And uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I had a breakup. I have a new girl. I I started doing NFTs. And suddenly, stuff is happening, and I love it. 
Yeah, sometimes all it takes is that like that one little, uh, you know, epiphany or moment in your life where you kind of just uh, see everything really clearly and uh, you're able to change it for the better, right? Like it's almost like you you wake up from something. Definitely. You worded it perfectly. Yeah, so no, that's that's amazing, man, and this has uh, been such an amazing conversation. So, um let's let's talk about um like, you know, ghost the uh the nft trader or ghost the nft degen right like um do you have any projects that you've been looking at right now have you minted anything recently have you have you bought anything recently that's uh particularly uh something you think is a great purchase or you want to share or you just kind of head down focusing on your own art uh no i I, to my surprise it was really something that instantly loved the stuff um, uh, like the trading and experience and that you find and Alphamid was like the place I remember telling me about it and um, just to come over I I know we to hang out and cloud at once um, uh, a community sorry you uh you cut out a little bit there. Who are you referring to again? I, I kind of heard that you were talking to someone referred you to it. Yeah, uh, we hang out in the Discord. That I think FMC and a few other uh, people started, and um, Cryptograph telling me come over to Alpha. Uh, it's great there. Mints and. What not enough out, but then I wasn't really super interested. In it. But then I came and I uh, suddenly realized I have this uh, on my wallet. And, uh, it's just hanging there, and uh, I could make like more money out of it. It, uh, it, it could be a business, basically. Uh, but besides the business, I just found out that it's just the fun also of of being together with uh, like-minded people and to to kind of combine and join forces and, you know, on the way we make a, a little money, not always, but I mean, for me, the last project I minted check, I think it was, uh, I minted humans of the metaverse. All right. Nice. Uh, and kind of got, got a, a there are not many doctors uh, in that in that thing and uh what did i mint else of course i'm their arcs uh, a fan uh we i have four of those uh they were quite amazing and still are yeah you were part of the orc train eh yeah i i'm i'm in there Certainly, yeah, certainly not a bad one to uh, to have been a part of for sure. And I am incredibly envious of <laughs> anybody that actually got in on that one, <laughs> including yourself. Yeah, it was last, like last minute. One with troops and uh, uh, went in. And uh, this this way I could secure like four in the end. And that was amazing that I, that I even could. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I have minted Huxley's uh, uh, Huxley comic. I've minted Red Santas. <laughs> they were free. They were pretty fun. Yeah, Red then, Red Santas had a minute on uh, on Alpha Mint too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they will ever. Bring it, uh, they're just fun to look at, and it's a beautiful season. <laughs> yeah, bad long. I still don't know exactly. Sell out so. I might never know how they look. <laughs> That's amazing, man. Well, th- this uh, this conversation has uh, been been truly fortunate for for me to be able to have. I wish Free Market was able to make it, but uh, I'm sure there will be plenty of other opportunities to. Uh, to end up with the chatting with all three of us and, and talk. And I know you have some exciting stuff on the horizon that, you know, you're, you can't quite share just yet, but there's a, a lot of things to be excited in, in ghost, a ghost land or ghost world or whatever you want to call it. Maybe that you need your own metaverse stuff too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I have to, but yeah, uh, you, you said it or you, you teased it. Um, 
you know, uh, I, there will be quite some crazy things coming. So um, I'm really like, it's not financial advice, but go out there and buy some. um just uh, one last question uh for you if you don't mind what was the kind of reasoning behind sticking around on foundation rather than doing your stuff on OpenSea? did you have um any particular mindset behind that or was just OpenSea, or was foundation kind of the first thing that stuck with you and and open kind of ended up being um not not Mm -hmm. appealing it's interesting because by the time i joined the space um, foundation was quite the exclusive club you know you had to get an invitation it's still like that i think but it was super um rare to to get your hands on an invitation um i don't know how it is right now but uh i always had the feeling it was like for for fine art it was quite a place to um i still get like really upset when I see that they take the 50 uh, of my uh, uh, sales but I mean it's I'm not I don't know if I will stay always foundation Uh, for now uh, uh, fine art stuff seems like really good there and the crowd that was looking for fine art is there so that's why I stuck with it yeah to be honest I just right now yeah. No, I was just going to say, I think that like it, it does actually really speak to your your art style. Like you're not doing these huge generative pieces like they're one of one, like handcrafted uh, uh, works of art. And I think a lot of times on OpenSea, there's a lot of noise there and, and the discovery is is not very good. As we've seen, like it's hard enough to just use the search function to find a verified project, let alone anybody that's doing the caliber caliber of work that you're doing. So. Um, you know, I, I, obviously this has uh, worked out incredibly well for you. Yeah, it's, it surprises me every time I think about it. Yeah, it, it has, and I'm super thankful for it, for it. Yeah, are you planning anything more on OpenSea, or you think you're sticking with Foundation? Like the next drop of Pantones, so that's going to be all on Foundation as well? Yeah, the next the next one I think will be Foundation. Uh, maybe we'll we will uh, think of uh, other venues. And um, yeah, I, I'm not sure, but thanks. For- maybe it makes sense. Oh, sorry, man, you cut out a, a little bit there again. Discord is uh, is is. Uh, yeah, a- I was just I was just saying that I, I for the idea, and maybe I'll look into other places that that might be uh, also a good venue to present the Pantone live. Well, whatever you're doing right now is is working. You're catching the eyes of the right people. And, uh, you know, clearly the success that you're having is uh, is putting a smile on your face, which is, uh, is, you know, anytime you can hear that in somebody's voice, it's, uh, you know, it's it's really a great interview or a great conversation to have, right? Thanks, Father. uh, (laughs) Yeah, I mean, like, it's it's really a pleasure to be here and I uh, really mean it. Like uh, those places are very seldom in real life where people uh, can come together and you know like share uh, joy for something and I think uh, right in between uh, good people and uh, that's that's why I'm here. And, uh, on just w- because I just read it in the chat, Illuminati. Uh, you know we we're still having. The- that collab uh, on the on the horizon, I'm, uh, I haven't forgotten. Oh, and I see uh, I see Charlie asking in the chat: one ghost, one of one wolf. Sounds like maybe maybe there is a, another collab opportunity there that I know some people would die to get their hands on. Oh fuck yes! Charlie. Including myself, maybe we might be fighting over it. <laughs> uh, hey. Uh... You know, I got you, Charlie. I still have your pants on piece almost done, but I still, you know, I, something I, I haven't matched your character, to be honest, and I'm I'm not very uh, pleased with it. That's why I haven't given it to you. <laughs> I'm still working like times I pull it up and I work on it. But yeah, maybe I just do a pant on wolf. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man, I love watching these conversations just go down in real time too. But um, honestly, this was this was amazing, Ghost. Uh, it, it, I hope that you know we continue to do these, especially as you have more on the horizon, um, like tons and tons of exciting things. And I know that the sky is the limit for you. Um, you know, I, I expect to see some numbers in the future there that are uh, up there with X copy, no doubt. Thanks, bro. Thanks, <laughs> thanks so much. Steve. Do you want to uh, do you want to finish this off with anything? Any parting words that you have for uh, for the people listening and the people that are going to be listening to this? Yeah, sure. Um, first off, really thank you for having me and to to uh, being so interested in stuff. I know that's not a given, and uh, I really appreciate it. And you giving me the stage, I really appreciate it uh, because uh, I, I really like to talk about the things that matter to me. It's one of the uh, things that matter to me. And to all of you, re uh, the rest of the listeners, uh, just be nice to your mama. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, man. That is the best closing line that you could have uh, <laughs> could have given there. So Ghost will absolutely do this again. Thank you. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank Absolutely. you for everybody that ended up uh, tuning in. We're sorry about the delay. Technical difficulties do happen on Discord. It's one of the endearing features of a $10 billion company. Um, but, you know, if anybody jumped in later or anything, we're going to have the whole recording in there for you in its entirety on YouTube. So um, we'll do this again soon, Ghost, and you have yourself a great day. And uh, thanks again. Thank you. Man. Thank you.